Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're happy to have here with us Professor Thomas Tsai here at the University of St. Joseph. Actually, he's the director of the Savior Center for Memory and Identity. But most of all, he's popular for being the assistant professor at the University of St. Joseph Faculty of Religious Studies and philosophy uh, with his students here and has written many books and articles. But today we'll focus on Matteo Ricci's teaching on the goodness of human nature. It's the mystic and neo-Confucian sources. The Jesuit missionary Matteo Ricci's teaching on the goodness of human nature in the true meaning of the Lord of heaven represents the fruit of the first encounter between Catholicism and Confucianism. This lecture will consider the Thomistic and Neo-Confucian sources in Rich's enunciation of the Catholic doctrine on the goodness of human nature in this Chinese catechism. It will illustrate that Ricci developed his teaching, which is fundamentally Thomistic, with the help of terminology borrowed from the Chinese philosophical tradition. His distinction between the good of nature and the good of virtue leads to prioritizing the cultivation of human nature. Rich's teaching reflects the early modern Jesuits' appreciation of human freedom. It also displays a Catholic reaction to the 16th century Neo-Confucian intellectual trend that ignored the importance of moral cultivation. So after that long introduction, we'll give the floor to Professor Thomas Tsai. Welcome. Thank you, Father Philip. So um, today's lecture, as, as Father Philip uh, uh, said, uh, will be um, uh, Matteo Ricci but not just uh, uh, Matteo Ricci's life and just one aspect of his teaching. And I would like to illustrate that in his teaching, we have a meeting between the East and the West. So his thought is not just um, a introduction of Christianity, or we say uh, uh, introduction teaching, uh, Christian teachings into China. It is a mutual, it, it happened in a mutual way. This is um, what I would like to uh, say in this uh, lecture. But let's first start with uh, two keywords of this lecture. Why we say Thomism and the Neo Confucianism? Why these two uh, schools can be the source of Matteo Rich's teaching on human nature? First, let's take a look at Thomism, right? Uh, we say early modern Jesuit Thomism is a very special form of Thomism, okay? When the Society of Jesus, founded by St. Ignatius, they realized that the study of St. Thomas Summa should be a substantial part of their theological training. So apart from the Bible, which must be the central place in theological studies, theological training, the uh, scholastic doctrine of St. Thomas is also a very essential part of the Jesuit training at that time. L we just take a look at, uh, take example of the Roman College, uh, which now is called um, Gregorian University in Rome. In this college, we have Francisco de Toledo. Maybe you can judge from the name. Um, he's, he's, he's from Spain. And in Spain, we have Salamanca School, uh, which is a center of the early modern Thomistic tradition. And he brought this Thomistic tradition from Spain, from Salamanca to the Roman college. And he taught the theology there. And of course, he wrote commentary on it. And Ricci, 
studied at Roman College from 5072 to 5077. So he entered the college around the year of 20, very young. So we can say that uh, Summa is the essential part of the Jesuit uh, theological training. And in the Roman College, we have Thomistic tradition. So that's why we say Thomism will have an influence on religious theological training, theological formation. Yeah. But um, the Thomism taught by the Jesuit um, is not the same as the Thomism taught by the Dominicans. Okay, this is what I have repeated again and in our class. I think um, some of you may know it. Um, may know it. So some. So today, um, some scholars, particularly from the Dominican tradition, would call this form of Thomism eclectic Thomism. Eclect means mix. Okay, so they mix different ideas together, but principally they follow Thomas Aquinas. So, so they borrow from St. Thomas, but feel no particular allegiance to him on every theological issue. Now, one of the example could be the, on the doctrine of immaculate conception. So this is not directly related to um, our topic, but it's something I would like to, um, to mention here. So next, now we know Thomism is, a, is a very essential to uh, the Jesuit training at that time, but the why new Confucianism? Now, in the 17th century, in the 6th century in China, uh, uh, Zhu Xi, uh, his teaching was still the official orthodox new Confucianism. And his book, Si Shu Zhang Ju Ji Zhu, commentary on the four books are the work all the students should use for imperial examination. Okay. Imperial examination, that means if you are young people, well, sometimes not very young, they would like to be a civil servant in China in the imperial system, they have to take this examination. And this is the book they have to read, they have to follow when they write essays on a particular topic. So his teaching is the official orthodox neo-confucianism in China, but at the same time, um, or Wang Yangming, you can see uh, Wang Yangming uh, died in uh, 1529, uh, quite late, uh, and very close to the time Matteo Ricci came to China. Okay, but at the at, in the in the 16th century, Wang Yangming his teaching would become very popular, and now we have. Uh, uh, in, in this is a uh, Ming Dynasty and the next one the Qin Dynasty. When the Confucian scholars reflect on the history of Confucianism in the Ming Dynasty, they said that um, this is Chinese. Uh, I translate some part of it. After Jia Jing Emperor and the Longqing Emperor, you can see the time of these two emperors. Okay, very few people faithfully follow the Chen Zhu. That means. Uh, Chen Yi and uh, Zhu Xi, very, people, uh, very few people faithfully follow Zhu Xi, and uh, very few people did not convert to Wang Yangming. So you can see Wang Yangming become more and more popular among um, Chinese scholars at that time. And this will uh, help to see, later we'll see, why uh, material rich would focus more on the practice of virtues. Okay. So this is the background, okay? Uh, tell me why I would like to say uh, there is a uh, Thomistic and a new Confucian influence on, on, on Matteo Ricci's life. Now, Matteo Ricci, you see, uh, Wyoming school was very popular, but Ricci must had the chance, have the chance to meet these people. And I just gave you some examples. Um, uh, Matteo Ricci settled down in Zhaoqing, um, in Guangdong, very not far from, from, from Macau, in 1583. Right? And he moved to Nanchang, this is Jiangxi, in the prom, uh, province in the middle of China. 
he met Zhang Huang. He is a scholar, belongs to uh, later we call the Zhang Yu Wang Men, and anyway, it's Wang Yangming School, Wang Yangming School in Jiangxi. And then he go north to Nanjing. And in Nanjing in uh, 1599, he had a famous debate on human nature with a Confucian scholars and the Buddhist monks. Okay. And he composed a work called The True Meaning of the Lord of Heaven, Tian Zhu Shi Yi, uh, chapter seven. So the chapter seven of Tian Zhu Shi Yi, the true meaning of the Lord of Heaven is based on this debate on human nature. But around his time in Nanjing, he met some uh, scholars from Taizhou Xue Pai. And this Taizhou Xue Pai, Taizhou is in Jiangsu province, which is not far from Shanghai. That Taizhou Xue Pai. And Taizhou Xue Pai, sometimes we call the Wang Men Zuo Pai, the leftists of Wang Yangming school. Okay? If we take um, Zhu Xi, if people close to Zhu Xi, we call it right, right wing of Wang Yangming school. So that means they are far from the teaching of Zhu Xi. So the matter these people are uh, broadly, they can be called belong to uh, Taizhou Xue Pai because Li Zhi's place is quite um, um, controversy, what, what, uh, controversial whether he belongs to Taizhou Xue Pai anyway. Broadly, we can say Li Zhi, Zhu Shilu, and Jiao Hong, all these people belong to Taizhou Xue Pai. And, and we will see later uh, their teaching. And, and I will, I, I will indicate that um, uh, Matthew Rich's human uh, teaching on human nature will be a, a kind of reaction to the teaching belong of this school. Okay, so this is the connection between Matthew Rich and the Neo Confucianism, particularly uh, Taizhou Xue Pai and the Wang Yangming, uh, the, uh, which belongs to Wang Yangming school. So this is the historical background. And then we move a little bit on to the idea proposed by Ritchie in Tian Zhu Shi Yi. It's called the substance of human nature. <clears throat> this idea usually don't used by Western theologians, um, but uh, Matthew Rich used it in his Chinese catechism, which published in 163. Uh, oh, no, 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 uh, uh, sorry, 163, yes. <clears throat> now, why he use this idea to present his teaching on human nature. We look at the two um, concepts presented by Zhu Xi. The first one is xin zhi ben ti, uh, the substance of nature, and the second one is physical nature, qi zhi zhi xin. Zhu Xi proposed this distinction in order to reconcile two ideas of him. The first one is nature is the same as principle, xin um, li, and the principle's settlement by material force. Okay, so first we have principle, which can be called nature, but at the same time, this principle in each person, in each particular person must be settled with material force. Okay? So when it is settled with, with, when principle is settled with physical nature, it cannot be called, uh, when it's settled with, sorry, sorry, with material force, it will no more be called the substance of nature, but only called the physical nature. And here we have a, <clears throat> a passage from <clears throat> his um, <clears throat> uh, topical arrangement conversation of Master Zhu. Uh, right. It says that before people or things are born, one can speak only of principle, that is uh, principle, and not of nature. So before the born of each particular person, there is principle. Okay? It is li, and of nature. This cannot be called nature. Nature is something only be realized in each particular person. I. And Chen Yi said, as soon as one speaks of nature, it is already not nature. And uh, what does it mean? This is the citation, a uh, sorry, a quotation from Chen Yi. Uh, uh, as uh, then uh, Zhu Xi give, give his commentary on it. As soon as one speaks of nature, 
This sentence refers to when humans are born, this principle has already fallen into material force. Qi. When the person is born, this Li principle fallen into material force, mixed with material force. And it is no longer the substance of nature. When this Li, this principle is settled with material force, is no more the substance of nature. Therefore, he said, it's already not nature. <clears throat> this is what he means by in humans, it is called nature. So in each human nature, we don't have in each particular person. So this is plural, okay, in humans. <clears throat> that means in each particular person, we no longer have the substance of nature. In general, humans have this material force because the because the principle <coughs> has been settled with material force, with qi. So once this principle starts to present in material force, it is called nature. Principle mixed with material force is called nature in each person. As soon as one calls it nature, it is already involved with being born and being mixed with material force, so it cannot be regarded as the substance of nature. But the substance of nature is not mixed with material force, qi. So when we can call the nature substance of nature before it is it, before its settlement with material force. So this is uh, the usage of the substance of nature, xin zhi ben qi, in zhu xi. <clears throat> so for him, material force uh, covers up the manifestation of the perfect substance of nature and Consequently, nature manifests goodness contingently. And for this reason, we, we know that for Manshoves, he said there is a goodness of human nature, but according to Zhu Xi's interpretation, human nature is only originally good before its settlement with material force. Now here is um, uh, the substance function conceptual plurality in Chinese philosophical tradition. This is a Use, this is applied in Zhu distinction. It is a uh, very complicated uh, topic, but anyway, we saw we 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 see here um, a very uh, traditional Chinese philosophical tradition is applied here. Actually, this is developed with influence of Buddhism. Anyway, this is what uh, beyond what beyond the topic of this <clears throat> like uh, lecture. That we have seen the usage of the substance of nature in Zhu Xi, and then we take a look at Matteo Rich's um, uh, reception of it. Uh, Matteo Rich used the word xing zhi qi, and we see that Zhu Xi uses xing zhi ben qi, very close, okay, but in English it's always substance of human nature. He said that the substance of nature is good, for it is created by God. Now it reminds you of uh, the topic we have learned in the module on creation and uh, sanctification, right? So if we say that the substance of human nature together with human feelings are all produced by the Lord of heaven, they are essentially good and not evil. Um, very close to the image of God, right? because God <clears throat> in Adam created a human being and he gave the gift, supernatural gift of original just, justice to Adam. Uh, and then we are, then we have the all human beings, um, even after Adam's fall, will have the ultimate end of seeing God face to face. This is the, uh, the, the call given by God. So this is his usage of it. Then, then in the place, he said that the, uh, because our nature has been infected with disease, now it refers to Adam's sin, right? Original sin. Our loves and hates and our judgments concerning the rightness and the wrongness of things are seldom con con uh, cracked and seldom true. Nevertheless, our fundamental nature 
was originally good. Okay, uh, in Chinese again, uh, it's 本性自善. Um, so that there is no reason why one should not say it is good. Our fundamental nature was originally good. Now, by using this substance of nature, we see he took approach very similar to Zhu Xi, although the idea put here is about God's creation. Okay, but we see there is a similarity between he and Zhu Xi by using this word, uh, the substance of nature. So the goodness of nature that remains after Adam's sin provides the possibility for human beings to do good because there is, there is something still remains here for us to do good. Now, what is the domestic source for um, religious uh, teaching as we have seen? Now, first, uh, there is a very famous passage in the first part of the second part, question 85, uh, article two, Thomas Aquinas, when asked uh, whether our human nature remains the same after Adam's sin, he said he made the distinction of three kinds of the good of nature after Adam's fall. Now, the first kind of goodness, uh, the good is, the first kind of good is <clears throat> the principle of which nature is constituted, that is, powers flowing from man as a rational being, such as reason. So even after Adam's fall, we still have the uh, power of, reason, of the reason. So we are still the rational being. So this good remains after Adam's sin. The second one is the inclination to virtue. And this inclination to virtue after Adam's sin is diminished. And it explains how human nature is weakened by original sin. The last good is the gift of original justice. It's totally lost. It, 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 it just corresponds to what he said here. Our, our nature has been affected by disease, our loves and hate concerning right. It's not always right, okay? Now, point one, point two, help Thomas Aquinas to stress that the good of nature is not entirely destroyed. Okay. We, there is still some goodness uh, in human nature. And apart from this uh, passage, in the Thomistic um, system, we have some other similar ideas help us to see this point, like uh, grace does not totally destroy the wound in the nature, but supposes nature and heals it. And this is not idea invented by Thomas Aquinas, but he used it in his um, uh, works. Uh, <clears throat> and another idea is Glatia Kapax, human nature naturally capable of grace. Okay. If human nature not capable of it, there's no point, there's no way for us to be healed, right? So we still have the capacity to be healed. And there is a root of inclination, radix inclinationis, uh, the root of inclination to virtue always remains as we have seen in the second, uh, second good. <clears throat> it's diminished, but not totally destroyed. And all these sources contributes to Rich's idea of the substance of human nature like we can see in these uh, examples uh, nevertheless our fundamental nature was originally good so that there is no reason why one should not say it is good because it has the capacity to reason the first good we mentioned its innate ability is always e existence and this can be used to recognize one's own sickness okay and to effect a recovery. It give, provides the possibility to be healed. Uh, <clears throat> and the second one, nevertheless, the substance of man's nature is good. Again, we see this um, term, the substance of man's nature is good and cannot be destroyed because of evil deeds. Okay. So even though, uh, even though, <clears throat> we are um, infected by original sin, 
the substance of man's nature is still good. Therefore, anyone who is determined to turn from evil to goodness has only to change his mind in order to success. And the Lord of heaven is sure to offer him his protection and support. So we can see from these uh, two uh, texts that for Matteo Ricci, even though um, our nature is ruined by Adam Singh, we still have the potential to be good. To be good in this substance of nature is only a potential. It must be realized. How can it be realized? By practicing virtue for him. So that's why he moved on to the next, next step, that virtue as an ornament of human nature. Now, <clears throat> now we in his um, record on on how to say on the society of jesus and the catholics um, entrance into china this is his 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 the book on, of um, recording how uh, the society and the catholics enters into china he made such um, an observation he said that um, uh, chinese people but to chinese scholar confucian scholars um do not have logic because they don't know how to make distinction between uh, the moral goodness, moral good and natural good. <clears throat> and of course, between uh, the acquired good and those comes from our human nature. Okay. So for him, the goodness of human nature, or we say the substance of nature, which is good, would not be sufficient. We must go further to acquire some other kind of goodness that is called moral good. And why he made such comment, this comment is made, um, made in his records on a discussion on the goodness of human nature and from where evil comes. And this discussion happened in 19, uh, 1599 in Nanjing. And I would re recommend you to read this uh, chapter of his record because in, you can find um, how he mocked a, a Chinese uh, Buddhist monk um, in this uh, passage. So uh, this is um, his observation on why he need to make need to make this distinction so now we see here <clears throat> there is an innate good which related to our nature we can see it by looking at um, rich's idea of the substance of nature so neither learned or acquired but originates from the substance of nature and another one is acquired goodness that is what man can accumulate through his own efforts. Oh, we can take example here. The goodness of human nature is innate goodness. Okay. The goodness of our nature does not come from our practice, okay? not from our habits. It is innate, whereas the goodness of nature, of virtue is acquired goodness. This is what we received from, um, uh, from practice. Innate goodness is the virtue originally bestowed on many by the Lord of heaven, and the man can claim no merit for that. The merit I'm speaking of here is limited to the goodness of that virtue that the man himself accumulates through his own efforts. Now, apart from this distinction of innate goodness and acquired goodness, I would also draw attention to another key word, merit. And the last words, efforts. Okay. So this acquired goodness related to what we call merit, and it also be realized through our efforts. This is very important, and we'll see why. There's a distinction, but there are also a link between nature and the virtue. They are not two separate things. Why? Because human nature is open to acquiring virtue and even finds its fulfillment in virtue. And in this way, 
Matteo Rich used the word uh, following the scholastic tradition called virtual, the second nature, to help us to see the connection between uh, uh, the, the, connect, the connection with the Western uh, theological tradition, particularly the Jesuit theological tradition here, there's a quotation from Suare, um, who was the most important um, Jesuit theologian of that period. Um, here he told us virtue does not destroy nature, okay? so, but only regulates nature. Like in music, music does not destroy sound, sound but regulates sound. Now, it helps us to see a, a relation between human nature and the virtue. Okay? Virtue is not something independent of our nature. It is based on our nature. So this is why when we have the goodness of nature, which can be seen in the substance of, of, or substance of nature, we should practice it. Otherwise, we will not have the real goodness. So this is, leads us to the topic of the importance of the practice of virtue. And he, Matteo Rich said that, although human nature is fundamentally good, the substance of nature is good, one cannot for this reason say that all men are good. Yeah. Even though the substance of nature is good, we don't say everyone is good, and particularly when we consider that the influence of Adam Sin. Only those who possess virtue can be called good. Uh, virtue important to, to help you to be labeled as a good person. Virtuous conduct added to goodness is the expression of that goodness. Okay, there's a link, you see, uh, virtue and the goodness of our, human nat uh, of our human nature. This is how man perfects what is fundamentally good. Um, the substance of nature which is good must be perfected by virtues. We know the importance of virtues and another question we should still have to address that is um, a very confucian idea of restoration to the nature originally possessed does that mean the virtue is only a restoration to the nature we originally possessed in chinese we call the fu qi chu return to its original state Matteo Rich particularly mentioned his Confucian in, uh, 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 interlocute that nature uh, acquired the good, or we say virtue, is not just the restoration to the nature originally possessed. So here is a divergence between his idea and the Confucian idea. Now, for the Chinese scholar, he said that nature must harbor virtue otherwise one cannot be good here we can see the idea here the chinese scholar says nature must always harbor virtue if it does not how can it be good so virtue is harbored in our nature and otherwise how we can practice it this is why it is said that the superior man is simply the one who restores nature to a nature he originally possessed. Okay. To return to, or we say in Zhu's words, we return to the nature before the settlement with material force. Right? But for material reach, not so not this way. Okay. <clears throat> not why <clears throat> material reach refused to accept this idea of Fu Chi Chu uh, restoration to original nature. First, he had to follow the Thomistic principle. Uh, the restoration of human nature by Christ is not a returning to a certain state of nature. That means the state of restored human nature is not the same as the state of original justice. The state of original justice is the state where enjoyed by, which enjoyed by Adam before his fall. Okay. <clears throat> for, um, for the Thomistic tradition, usually, uh, and they divided the, uh, the, the states of human nature into five states. Okay. Uh, state of original justice is the first historical state. That means really happened in history. Uh, this is the first state enjoyed by human beings, but they, we lost it by Adam Singh. 
But the final state, <clears throat> that is the state of restored human nature, which is realized by, by Christ's redemption, right? Our nature will be restored by him. But when our nature is restored by Christ, it would not be the same as the state of original justice. This is the domestic principle um, he followed. Okay, so that means we cannot say that finally we should restore the original nature as those Confucians held. The second reason um, actually would be more evident if we read his um, um, uh, text. He said that the practice of virtue is the cultivation that involves human efforts. That's why I remind you these two keywords, merit and efforts. Okay. So merits are credited to the moral agent, but not, does not claim any merit in the restoration what he has lost. Yeah. So when we practice the virtues, we put efforts and the credit will be given to you. This is called the merit. Okay. So as we see in the goodness of our human nature, we do not have any, uh, we do not have a credit or we say merit to enjoy because everything was given by God. You see here, <clears throat> the Western scholar says, if goodness merely means the restoration of original nature, then every person would be a sage at birth. Why should a distinction be made between knowing it at birth and knowing it through education? Now, again, there is a divergence between Wang Yangming school and the Zhuxi school. For in Zhuxi school, they would put more emphasis on learning, pursuing knowledge. Okay, this is the and here Matthew Rich's idea again emphasized on. Distinction between made knowing it at birth and knowing it through education. Knowing it through education, like something we should put efforts, like uh, like in the case of uh, practice of virtues. <clears throat> if you say that virtue does not represent new knowledge, and that it is merely a restoration of what I already have, uh, then its loss was great offense. To restore what one has lost cannot be said to be a work of great merit. If you just say it's a restoration to original what you originally you have, you will not have merit. This idea of particularly emphasizing merit and moral efforts and our merit actually reflects the Jesuit. <clears throat> Uh, the Jesuit theology in early modern period. Um, uh, as I have mentioned in my class, I have, some of you may know that uh, there was a controversy between the Jesuit and the Dominicans, right, on the um, on the relationship between human freedom and grace. Generally speaking, that is. Generally speaking, Jesuits at that time would put more emphasis on human freedom. Okay? And the Dominicans on the other side usually put more em uh, emphasis on God's power. Okay? Now, for this reason, we can see here in Matteo Rich's text that he mentioned a lot of times merit, moral efforts, why, why they are important. Okay. So the prominence of virtue, human merit, and human free choice, they are the distinctive feature of Jesuit theology to harmonize divine grace and human freedom. And this is the Jesuit way of responding to the Council of Trent's efforts to address the pessimistic view of human nature and the moral capacity held by Protestants. If Protestants uh, said that our nature is totally ruined, totally destroyed by sin. There is a gap between us and God, right? Uh, the Jesuit, uh, the Catholic Church, following the medieval theological tradition, we would like to held two sides. That means God's power and the human freedom together. Uh, we cannot, we cannot forget these two sides. They want a Catholic Church will put them together. But how to harmonize these two things? The Jesuits had their way to make more emphasis on human freedom. 
okay we can do a lot of things we can achieve virtues by practice it okay so that's why i think uh, matteo ricci uh, when facing the uh, confucian scholar made a lot of times why uh, merit why moral efforts virtue all these things are important now apart from his jesuit background uh, i would also mention the, <clears throat> the uh, late Ming uh, Confucianism, which can, I think, can have um, indirect influence on his idea uh, of, uh, uh, of, of putting uh, merit and <clears throat> moral effort, effort uh, in a lot of, uh, in, a, in, <clears throat> in a prominent way. As we have seen that, uh, remember Taizhou School, the school um belongs to Wang Yangming and his followers and at Wang Yangming's time in 1527 there is a colloquy very famous event uh, in the in Ming New Confucianism uh, Tian Chun Zheng Dao two disciples uh two pupils or two disciples of Wang Yangming met together they had a debate now it's a very a complicated issue, but what I would like to highlight is that for Wang Longxi, or we say Wang Ji, he proposed that yi ben qi wei gong fu, that means the original substance of mind is the same as moral effort. Okay. Uh, the goodness of our, if we put it in a simple way, the original goodness of our human nature is the same as the effort. Okay. Moral effort is the same as the goodness of nature. They're the same thing. The only thing you should do is to enlighten suddenly you are good. Right. This is called, in Chinese, we say yi ben qi wei gong fu. And another one, Qian De Lo, or Qian, Qian De Hong, <clears throat> he will say that yong gong fu yi fu ben qi. That means restoring original substance through efforts. Now you see the difference, okay? The second one puts a lot of emphasis on effort, as Matteo Rich did. But actually, at the end, in, in, uh, around the time when Matteo Rich came to China, the first, uh, this one, disciples of Wang Longxi would be more popular at that time. And most of the people he met probably would be belong to this school. And we can see here Wang Gen, the founder of Taizhou School. Now, the moral cultivation is no more than recognizing the self-presence of innate knowledge that is possessed by all people. Okay, and for this reason, he proposed. The, he made the famous uh, teaching: "People feeling the street are all sages." You know, sages are not those who did a lot of moral practice. Everybody on the street are sages. He did not make the clear distinction between what is potential and what is realized. And I think Rich's um, emphasis on virtual and moral effort should, can be a reaction to this trend in new Confucianism. Um, the goodness of nature does not necessarily lead to the goodness of virtue. There are two things. Okay? It can be, as I said, this can be a response to the second the first school and very close to the second school restoring original substance through effort <clears throat> now we have the um conclusion here <clears throat> first um, um richie formulated this his christian doctrine of human nature with the assistance of confucian terminology particularly the term the substance of human nature and by using this substance of human nature, he illustrated two points, which very Christian. God created human being in a perfect state and having been weakened by original sin, human nature's capacity to reconcile, uh, to recognize spiritual sickness and to be healed still remains. Okay. Even though after uh, original sin, we still have the capacity to be healed. <clears throat> And this important idea was inherited by later Jesuits. So later Jesuits in China would 
accept the term the substance of nature, Xing Zhi Ti, in the discussions on human nature. Like Aleni, um, he said that as long as the substance of human nature had not yet been spoiled, the way was realized by simple following it. So he, uh, he, he used the word, you see here, the substance of human nature, right? So this idea uh, is, is follow, was followed by um, his um, <clears throat> uh, colleagues. And the three, Rich's appreciation of human moral effort first reflected the Catholic theological tradition to note that we have human freedom we still have the goodness which have not been which has not been totally destroyed by original sin and particularly this tradition we can see in the Jesuit approach to human freedom they realize that human freedom is important when we <clears throat> uh, when we talk about virtue talk about moral practice and uh, this uh, appreciation of moral efforts can also be a reaction to a trend in late Ming Confucianism, which overlooks uh, the importance of moral development. And lastly, <clears throat> uh, an awareness of innate goodness of human nature is not the same as a process of cultivation, such as overcoming the self. Uh, so Awareness of innate goodness of human nature can be a proposition held by a lot of Confucian from Taito school. But for Matteo Ricci, a process of cultivation is what he want. Uh, what, 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 sorry, what he wanted. Okay. So we can realize this cultivation by overcoming ourselves. And this is something I, I think I borrowed from. Uh, other Confucians like Zhu Xi, Ke Ji, um, but they are not the same as a, just a kind of awareness of in, innate goodness of human nature. Right? Aware of awareness of innate goodness of human nature can be a sudden enlightenment. Okay, so it's not a process cultivation. Process cultivation is what held by Matteo Ricci. So he used the word overcoming the self. We should overcome ourselves. To cultivate ourselves and put a lot of efforts in the moral um, cultivation. So this could is, is, is a way for him to, to, uh, to achieve this um, uh, moral cultivation. And this idea of Kuji overcoming the self paves the way for another idea. It's called subduing the present human nature, Xing, which is totally different from the Confucian tradition and caused some controversies, subduing the present human nature. You see here, from material riches, overcoming the self, overcoming ourself. For example, overcoming our desire. Okay. Then later on, his colleagues, what we say, confrères, they move on to subduing the present human nature from overcoming the self overcoming the, the desire, for example, to overcoming your present human nature. That means the human nature spoiled by Adam. This is a transition made later after Matteo Ricci. And I think he paved, uh, his idea paves the way for the, for the Ke Xing, for subduing, overcoming the present human nature, advocated by his confrère such as Diego de Pantoja and Alani, I think um, uh, subduing the present human nature, I think will be the topic of my next uh, uh, lecture. Anyway, okay, thank you.